What's up, everyone? What is happening? Okay, so Bernie Sand is taking another step in Progressiveville, um, this time by um, saying he would like uh, convicted felons in, in prison, ca incarcerated uh, inmates to vote in the election. Uh, let's go to a Newsweek article and uh, let's see what it has to say. Okay, so Vermont Senator and 2020 presidential candidate Bernie Sanders told Iowa voters Saturday he believes convicted felons should be allowed to vote, not just after being released, but also while still incarcerated because they're still living in, in, in American society. Um, for, you know, they, yeah, they're still living in America. You call that American society. They're, they're like in prison. They're like, you know, yeah, they're still in, you know, in society. They're the worst of society. They've been removed from society to live, you know, and be housed someplace where they can be away from society so they don't cause any more trouble that they have been causing. That That's why they're there, you know. It's just, it's just a silly argument, you know, uh, 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 for him to make that they should have the right to vote. It's like, why should they have the right to vote? They lost that right when they were convicted of the crime that they committed, right? That's part of the you know uh, of, of the deal that you pretty much make with society when you're arrested and you're convicted and you go to prison like you're awarded to the state or, or, or to, you know to the feds you lose the right to vote you lose certain rights when you're incarcerated like why give them the right to vote how about the right to bear arms how about we give them that right you know they're still living in american society why not right why take one right away from them and or, or give one right back and not give the other one right it's not fair what about equality right you lose the right to bear arms when you when you're a felon when you commit serious crimes right you also lose the right to vote you know why give them these rights i don't think inmates are sitting in prison really you know having like uh, uh, um you know debates and 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 i don't think politics is really like at the top of their priority list and in, in prisons like now you want them to vote you know how many of them are actually going to show up to cell block eight to <laughs> to cast their vote you know i don't think many of them really give a shit about who's going to be president you know most of them you know if if, if they're in there for uh, for serious serious crimes uh are uh, either not coming home or they're going to be in jail for so long that it wouldn't affect them, you know, whoever becomes president. They just don't give a shit. You know, I try to think, what what is Sanders thinking that he has, you know, that he wants them to be able to vote? Like, what is this going to work? How is this going to work out? You know, and um, the, the only thing I could really think of is the reason he would want inmates to vote is so he can pander to the progressive uh, uh, side of the country and get them to vote for him. Because the inmates, you think about it, there's, they say there's roughly like 2 million inmates, so 2, two million people incarcerated in America. How many of them are actually going to show up to, you know, to cell block eight to, to cast their vote, right? Only a certain amount of them are going to actually show up to, to vote, right? Let's say, let's say we trim the fat out of all the inmates and this is the amount of them that actually do care and they do vote, right? Um, chances are they're not Trump supporters, you know, and, and maybe you have some, some Trump supporters sitting in prison. I'm pretty sure in most of the prisons, if you do support Trump, you keep your mouth shut about it, right? I don't think it's pretty safe for you. You know, prison is the most ignorant place you could be. So you see how ignorant the, the, liberals act towards people wearing a mega hat in the street you can imagine how violent it must be if you walk around prison talking about you know or make make america great again you know i'm pretty sure they're not really fond of america in in prison so that might not be something you want to say so let's just say you know you have these two million people a certain amount of them are going to vote right let's just trim the fat out of the ones who will show up to actually vote and actually you know want to you know cast their ballot right those are the ones that are going to be counted now has the issue you have prisons scattered across the country some like here in new york state we have plenty of prisons upstate we have a term that we use here we always like you know oh he got sent up you know up north uh you know stuff like that that's the meaning he's in prison so you have prisons in New York. You also have prisons in California. These are states that are going to go to the Democrats no matter what. It doesn't matter if every single inmate uh, 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 votes or not, if they have the right to vote. Democrats win New York all the time. Democrats win California all the time. So having inmates voting you know, in these states really means absolutely nothing. It's not going to hurt the, the Republicans at all. If you look across the country, all the prisons scattered, any state that's that's predominantly Democrat is going to win anyway, right? The states that are predomin predominantly uh, uh, Republican are not going to change because, you know, a few hundred inmates uh, uh, voted, right? It's not going to change anything, right? So really all you're doing is um, Sanders is trying to scoop up whatever uh, uh, votes he can get uh, for himself so he can, to, to help him win that state, you know, against his uh, against his peers. That's really what this is about. 
Um, and also getting the low-hanging fruit voters who think uh, uh, communism and socialism is a good idea to vote for him. Because, you know, the Democrats, they just love their inmates. They think that the inmates have been victimized by society, and that's why they're in jail. They think that they're the true victims and, and, and not, you know, not the, you know, not the cause of the issue, but the, the you know, the victim of, of, of what happens in, in, in society, right? Like, forget about the fact that the inmate, you know, made a terrible, terrible decision and ended up in prison. Forget about the fact that the inmate's uh, parent not parents, uh, did a terrible job raising them. And uh, forget about, you know, what about the culture in which they come from and the environment they were raised in and, and, and the behaviors of other people and, and themselves, right? It's always our fault. It's never anyone else, right? It's, it's always, you know, society's fault for what, uh, you know, blame the 1% or something or blame white supremacy or the Nazis or something for why people end up in prison, why a man will rape and kill a child. You know, it's not the man's fault, right? It's everyone else's fault but that actual inmate who did that crime. And now you want him to have the right to vote I mean, why not give him the right to own property? Let him buy a house and let him uh, let him have a firearm and and stuff like that. You know, why not? Why take that right away from him? Are you going to give him the right to vote? I say give him give him all the rights. Give him the whole constitution right back at him. You know, why not? Why stop at just the uh, the the right to vote? I'm um, also in this article. Sanders. Uh, uh, okay, let's see Sanders, who is a 2020 presidential. A uh, 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 2020 Democratic fundraising front runner, despite not being an official member of a party. He is an official member of a party. He's a Democrat. Let's be real. Uh, I, you know, I know he likes to say, oh, I'm an independent. That's just a nice word of saying, you know, I'm really a Democrat. I just don't want to call myself that because I want to separate myself from the Democrats to, to try to seem like I'm, uh, you know, uh, better than them in some way. Um, uh, he has largely focused his campaign on universal health care and a fight against income inequality and a rigged system of billionaires. You know, and th this is the funny part in all of this. You know, when they say things like this, like, first of all, health care is going to cost so much money that this this universal health care that they want, that this free health care for all that they want to give out to, you know, 320, 320, up to 325 million people in America. It's going to be it's going to cost so much more. Like the estimate for it was like over a trillion dollars a year, if not more. Like it's going to bankrupt our country you can't just give everyone free health care and that's going to solve the issue it's not it's going to cost more money than it's worth you know and then a, a rigged system it's like you're part of the rigged system like like i love the democrats when they talk about rigged systems and they want larger government they want bigger government with more control over everything and they want more of a of a planned economy and a centralized system you know so what so they can rig the system and then they talk about a rigged system like that is a rigged system if you have a big government that has more control you have a planned economy you're rigging the system. That's exactly what it is. But then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go out there and you're gonna tell the crowd that you you fight against the rigged system. No, you don't. You are the rigged system. And I don't see you fighting against the DMC or against Hillary uh, Hillary Clinton for screwing you in 2016. You're not saying a word about that, Bernie. Are you right? Talk about a rigged system. Shit. And then the income inequality. It just kills me because it's like if I own a company and I meet the minimum wage requirement with some of my employees. And then maybe pay pay more to other employees. How much more am I supposed to pay? It doesn't matter how much money I'm making. I I, I pay according to the law, and, and and I pay even more in some cases. You can't force me to pay more. Like my bosses do not have to give me a raise. I can go speak to my boss right now and say, look, I I need a raise. He can say no. He can say, I'm sorry, but we're not giving you a raise because maybe your performance is not there. It's not worth the raise or because the company's just not making the money that we used to make or whatever the case may be. You know, we love you to death, but, you know, we're not going to give you the raise because we put up with your bullshit all the time. So it's a trade off. There's nothing I can do. My bosses do not have to give me a raise if they don't want to. You know, this whole income inequality thing is like it's a silly argument that they can literally go on and on and on and on forever with. And they know they can't do anything about it. So, you know, unless the country turns to socialism, that is the only way that they'll be able to do anything about it because then they can, they'll take over the companies and then pay people, everyone the same, everyone will get the same salary. This is what they advocate for. And it's like, it's, it's not going to work because then, you know, we're not really going to be, you know, it, it, you're not going to have this equality because if I work harder, I deserve more money than someone who's not working as hard as me. So it doesn't work that way. You, you just, you can't force people to pay more. You, you can't change the outcome. This, 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 you know, this is what they want. They want uh, equality of outcome and it doesn't work. You can't force an outcome. In, in life, you just can't do that. You, you, you know, it's just not going to work. You know, maybe my neighbor works really, really hard and I'm lazy. You can't force us to have the same outcome. It's just not going to work. It's not fair. It's not fair to the neighbor. So, you know, it's just more silliness coming from the left. It's more wokeness. They're trying to outwoke each other. They're pandering for votes. They're bribing for votes. Typical shit the left does. Um, 
you know, you know, these are all all these candidates. They're all like they play a sport in the Prussian Olympics, and here they are. This is you know trying to give their best performance, trying to win the gold medal in the Prussian Olympics. You know, pandering to to an audience of low hanging fruit uh, 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 Democratic voters who are falling for this nonsense. You know, I I hear it time and time again from a lot of people when, when I speak politics with them, and they say, well, they like what this candidate has to say, and it's like, do you really like what they have to say? Do you, did you actually think about what they're saying? Think about what they're saying and, and, and apply it to reality. Think about what is coming out of their mouth and, you know, picture if if we did this, like how much would all of this cost? What is the cost behind all of this, right? You know, how, how would this work? Where's the evidence that any of this will actually work? You know, think about it. You know, what? what how much is this going to cost to to implement, you know, free health care for everyone and and, you know, income, in, you know, income inequality and, you know, and if you really want to... Uh, um, cut down, you know, if you really want to make it easier for us, you can stop taxing us on top of tax on top of tax. Let us keep some money in our wallet. You know, the here in New York state, you know, now what they're doing is for, for Manhattan, they're having a congestion price where if you have a car in the city or multiple cars, you have to pay up to $10 a day. Now, I don't know if it's Monday, if it's seven days a week or just Monday through Friday, I'm going to assume Monday through Friday and give them the benefit of the doubt. That's going to cost $50 a week, $200 a month per car. So if you live in Manhattan or if you're doing business or if you work and you drive into Manhattan for whatever it is, you, you know, taxi or uh, Uber or, you know, whatever whatever type of employment you have. And if you, you have to have a car in the city or if you live there or if you just have to go there, it's going to cost you an extra $10 a day. That's $200 a month, not including Saturday and Sunday because I eliminated that just in case, you know, just to give them the benefit of the doubt. That's an extra $200 a month. I mean... You know, that's 2400 more a year that they're sucking out of the economy that in, through taxations that they're taking from us. It's like, why don't you let me keep that $200 so I can actually pay my rent? Because when I'm short $200 a month, it's like, well, there you go. That's why I'm short. You know, I'm already short of my rent and now I'm short an additional $200, Democrat. Thank you. But you want to talk about income inequality because that seems to be, you know, your buzzword that you like to throw out there, you know, while focusing on getting inmates to be able to vote because that's important to you. It's like, you know, fuck me for working and paying taxes and not committing a crime, right? You need to step on me even further because I shouldn't have any rights. Like you want to take rights away from me and you want to hand it to the, you know, to the the, the, the underlings of, of, of society because you they still live in an American society. It's like, no, they don't live in an American society. That's why they're in prison. They were removed from an American society and placed someplace where they can be away from us so society can flourish without them because they're hindered. They're hindering our, our society and our way of life. Right, they don't play by the rules, so they will play someplace else. Okay, yeah, they're still on U.S. soil, but they've been removed from society. They've been removed from us. Right, they they are a subculture of people. They live someplace else now because of the crimes they committed. So no, they shouldn't have the right to vote. This is just silliness. It's just him pandering for votes and trying to prove you know that he can outwoke uh, uh, um, his uh, his peers in in the election. So all right, that's all I have. Please like, comment, uh, 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 share, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, I'm going to post a link to this video in the com in, in, in the description, and I'll see you guys next time.